Math Blaster Mystery, The Great Brain Robbery, released in 1996. Oh boy, math has always been one of my worst subjects. I'm an absolute math moron, so this should be fun. The plot of this one is, well, uh, a little weird, I guess. Wait just a minute, folks. This just in. A most gruesome robbery has occurred. A terrible tragedy. Someone has stolen Big Brain's brain right out of his head. Ah! Authorities say they have no leads, no clues, no idea how to find the brain of the greatest math competitor this town has ever known. Sounds like the work of that creepy Dr. Dabble to me. So this little green demon guy is gonna go find some guy's brain. Hmm, well, actually I do fully support this plot idea. This one is a point-and-click adventure set in a spooky mansion. You travel through various rooms of the house looking for three pieces of a painting to get a key to the lair of Dr. Dabble. And if for some reason you get lost in this tiny little house, there is a map, just in case you need it. Each room has various interactive objects to click on, for example this globe. Jeez, just little entertaining things to keep it interesting. Well, actually, that is kind of disturbing, uh, some kid trapped like that, and I don't help him, which actually is more disturbing. Clicking on certain objects will give you coins. These coins are used in the main math games to get the painting pieces. These games are presented to you by some creepy, freakazoid-looking guy, and you pay whatever amount it offers. Apparently, the more coins you spend, the easier the game will be. Each game has a three-win requirement before you can get the painting piece, and you're rewarded with more coins to play more games if you win. In this game, you're trying to find a secret number. You ask a question about the number, such as if it's an odd number, and if it's even, the machine will get rid of all the odd numbers. So you keep asking questions to narrow down the identity of the secret number. The process of elimination, basically. I was a little concerned when I started this because I didn't know what a prime number was. You idiot! I could have looked it up, but this was a case where me being this stupid was actually amusing to myself. So I didn't look it up, and I just wanted to see how far as an idiot I could actually get. But yeah, I did knock off the uh, first game pretty good, so haha. -ha. The next game is a cooking game where you're required to move jars off the gold scale and pile jars onto one of the blue scales. Your goal is to match the target weight at the bottom of the screen. Pretty simple. But while I was moving these, uh, it kept not allowing me to stack certain ones on top of each other, and I couldn't figure out why. I just didn't get it. I, I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I kept moving these things back and forth for like 10 minutes. They wouldn't stack on each other, and I just I didn't understand. But uh, all it really was, though, is you just had to put the heaviest weight on the bottom first. And that was it. You idiots! This next game is involving adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplication, using brackets. The trick here is you can only use each number on the side once for each answer. So for the most part, I did remember how to do these, so I guess school works, things do stick. I did forget though that this game provides a built-in calculator, which uh, would have made this easier. So I ended up doing all these questions in my head to achieve the answer, which I did awesome in. Um, I guess something I can say I was proud of, I guess. You idiot! Along with the three main games, the house is full of these uh, large cast of unusual characters who will quiz you on various math problems for more coins. They're all fully voice acted, which I actually wasn't expecting, so that was kind of neat. My pal Peter Cottontail emptied 15 eggs from the box he'd been given for a homework assignment on, um, uh, oh, volume, and he smashed them all on his head. <laughs> Messy, yuck! Then he wrote down the dimensions of the box. Length, 13 and one half inches. Width, Six and one half inches, height eight ninths of an inch. What's the volume of the box? Huh? Uh, um, uh, uh, C? Oh, I got it right. You idiot! If you do get it wrong, though, you'll be sent to the basement, and there's really no penalty there. But it will walk you through the question and try to help you understand what the question was asking and what information you should have used to solve it. So actually, that was a pretty good addition. After getting the three pieces, you go to the secret room, and then you play this side shooter game with absolutely terrible mouse controls. Just feels really jerky and unresponsive. Uh, probably the worst thing about this game is this part. Well, this and a rather short and lousy ending. But overall, I did kind of like Math Blaster. 
The graphics aren't too good, but it's got a kind of Ren and Stimpy thing going and a weird sense of humor, which I enjoy. The characters are certainly forgettable, though. Even with the voice acting, none of their personalities stood out, or any of their designs particularly noteworthy. The games aren't too fun or even designed that well either, but they do accomplish the goal of giving you a math problem, then having you solve them. That's what it's supposed to do, and it doesn't. Although you do learn a few things here, this is more about testing you on the math knowledge you already have. So this is probably a great thing for schools to have, or just to keep uh, your math skills sharp at home. The final mini game and the ending itself was a bit lacking, and I'm pretty sure if my math skills failed me here, my enjoyment of this would have been way down. I'm pretty sure that's true for anyone who may also struggle with math. But still, Math Blaster Mystery The Great Brain Robbery as a game that tests your math knowledge, I do have to say that it does it pretty well. Thanks for watching.